there's a certain extent certain things go to. And him cursing him out, threatening his family, calling him names. And I heard the kid had to pay like fifteen thousand for a trip that he wasn't even intending. Mm-hmm. And like things like that, you don't know somebody's financial problems. The kid for all you know, he could have a gambling problem, and he needs the money or something like you. You know, anything his family could be having problems. He could anything can be going on, and you can't force somebody to pay for stuff and threaten people because they don't do something you like. And I think the guy should be off the team. You think you you think he should be just kicked off the team? Completely. Okay. I mean, the way I see it is. It's scary because now they have to investigate if this is normal throughout the NFL. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what really scares me because you understand that the freshmen get treatment. They carry the pads in the NFL. Hey, that's little stuff. I though. mean, that's the little stuff. They pay for dinner. There was a report a rookie had to pay a $30,000 meal ticket for Miami as well. $30,000 for a meal. Think about that. I'm lucky if I make that my first year working, and that's a <laughs> meal for a rookie. And it probably doesn't – that doesn't make that much of a dent in his paycheck. Um – but the way I see it is, he's suspended indefinitely, and now that now that now the question is, are the Dolphins going to cut him? But if they cut him, it'll actually cost them more money than to keep him on the roster see, at I, this point. I think it should be something in your contract where certain things like that you just get cut and not paid. Like it should be a clause in your contract mm-hmm. because that's not acceptable at all. You're supposed to be as much as you don't if they don't want to accept it. You're a role model to kids out there and. You're an NFL player. You represent a lot more than just yourself. Yeah. And now, if you're gonna act like that. You shouldn't be paid. Do you put any responsibility on the coaches? Because I think it's hard. It's hard for me to believe that the coaches didn't know this was going on. No. Because the coaches are there all the time. I think it's easy to not know what's going on. Really? If you're a coach, and this being a college athlete, I'm, I'm I can think of a, a numerous amount of times we have conversations as players and coaches know nothing about it, mm. or an incident can happen and the coaches won't know, and it, and it's dependent on coaches staying together and the players staying together. And um, it's it's honestly it's easier than you would think that a coach not knowing what's going on, because say a bill does come, say all the players go out to eat and the coach is home or mm-hmm. the coach is on the other side of the restaurant. Yeah, you're not gonna know that they didn't, they all not chipping in. Yeah, because the guy's not gonna come and say, hey coach, uh, this guy's bullying me. Like, what grown man's gonna do that? You know? Exactly. But I mean, and someone made uh, I don't remember who, but another a uh, former NFL player said that part of it falls on the rookie on the rookie's head because he shouldn't feel as he shouldn't take it. Like you're like you're a grown man. Don't take this. Like step up for yourself. But you didn't. I mean, it's not too many Des Bryant's in the world. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a football player. You're a football player. Carry your own pack. Yeah. And it went on for a while, and then they did Des Bryant the same way. He mm-hmm. ended up paying a fifty thousand dollar check. Yeah. And nobody had a problem with that when that happened. No. Because Des Bryant acted out. Mm-hmm. So it made it look like it was his fault. Like they got him back. And the whole world, society, nobody had a problem with it. But now that it happened, and this this content is is totally different. Now, do you think um, do you think Miami is going to be distracted by this whole entire scenario right now? Even though it's only like for these like these two these two specific players, but heading into I think they have um I think they have a Monday night game this week against Tampa Bay. I mean, not not really. Media's going to be there regardless. It's just now they have something to talk about, so mm-hmm. it's not really there just just for being there. And I I don't think it's I mean it's a big it's a big uh, deal, but I don't think it's something that's going to distract the whole team. No, and they're playing Tampa Bay anyway, so it shouldn't distract them very much anyway. <laughs> But the thing is, I think it's fun to, like, you know, rookies carry equipment. Mm-hmm. Like rookies bring you donuts in the morning. Little stuff like that. But talking about $15,000 and you talking about threatening a man, and that's crossing the line. Yeah, completely. I, I, I think so, too. Uh, Herm Edwards on ESPN said that he made rookies bring him a dozen Krispy Kreme hot donuts every every game day morning. And he just pointed someone out in practice and says, it's you this week, it's you next week, it's you the week See, after that. That's $6 out of your pocket. <laughs> that, that, that's not that, that much. You know, $6 is nothing. So, I don't know. But, like, again, I'm saying it's very easy for coaches not to know what's going on. Uh, I'm, as a grown man, you got a lot of pride. You don't want to go tell another grown man your problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised by that. Um, I thought that the coaches have a pulse on the situation. I mean, even if, like, the way I – this is now I don't know anything obviously uh but I think a coach should be able to see like the body language a players have toward one another and should be able to see from that if like a player is having like a problem with another player I'm I don't know man it's really it's honestly hard cuz as a coach as a, say a football coach mm-hmm. how many people in the locker room like 60 there, there's 50 people on a roster 52 people on a roster all right so you I mean, yeah, you see everybody, but you're not really seeing everybody. You you're not keying in on something. Yeah, you're exactly. not really. Some, okay. And it's something so minor like that. Not minor. The whole situation is crazy, but mm-hmm. something so minor as walking around being sad or down. It could be a million other things before you even guess that another teammate is bullying you. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. It's it's tough. It really is tough. But I don't think there's no way for the NFL to do an investigation on it. 
You don't think the NFL Support can like find teams. a solution to it? I, no. It's still going to happen. What are you going to say? Rookie's going to be treated like a 10-year vet? Yeah, I mean... I mean, even the refs treat like treat, treat rookies treat rookies differently. You're gonna get a penalty call on you if it's controversial for your rookie. <laughs> but if you're a ten year veteran, uh uh-uh, uh, you pick that flag back up. Yeah, like I I don't get I don't like that neither. Like the superstar call, I don't like that at all. Like LeBron, LeBron go to the whole foul with with, with fifty seconds left in the foul. game, foul. But let uh Eric Snow <laughs> <laughs> say he was in the NBA still, he go to the hole. It's like nothing. I didn't see him yeah. foul. Like that's no. That, I, not acceptable. That 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 happens in college though too. That yeah. might happen to you this yeah, year. Yeah, no, even last year, mm-hmm. mom, it's a moment of hey, we have to drop the ball. We're gonna get a call, mm-hmm. and referee's gonna blow the whistle. Aside of somebody else going to the hole. You mean even if you don't like it, you just gotta go with it because that's the way the game is. Yeah, and you gotta adapt. You got that's the only way to survive. You gotta adapt. To what's <laughs> going on? You gotta adapt and to, and to play the game, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, quick quick sidetrack. Obviously, free throws more important in basketball this year mm-hmm. because more one on one situations, more double bonus. Are you guys practicing extra free throws during practice yeah, and prepare for that? A lot, a lot of free throws going up after practice and before practice. What's the percentage of coaches want you hitting at the, from the free throw line? I mean, up to him, it would be a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> realistically, realistically, ninety ninety percent. Ninety percent. So you're Steve Nash. Everyone has to be Steve Nash mentality That's, at the free throw yep. line. Coach has the bar high at always. So eighty five to ninety. How many people hit that mark? Hmm. A good amount right now, but it's not 5,000 fans screaming your name mm-hmm. and booing you, so it's easy to shoot them in, in practice. I mean, uh, yeah, obviously everything's a little bit better in practice. Uh, now, you do you know the story of the, of the Duke Speedo guy? No, I haven't. Uh, there's, I think it was four or five years ago, but Duke, they have crazy fans in Cameron Indoor, crazy fans. It was during a North Carolina game, Speedo guy, uh, he tells the entire Duke student section behind the basket to be quiet. Everyone, everyone just to calm down. Everyone agrees. They're like, we don't know what's going on. And a UNC player goes up for a free throw, and he comes up only in a Speedo and starts doing a dance. <laughs> and only a Speedo, just dancing and going crazy. And the, and the target player missed both free throws just because he was so distracted. <laughs> and they did a special on it on ESPN during, like, a, like a college game. Are they you did yeah, I'll, se- I'll send you the video. It's absolutely hilarious. But... With something like that, is something like that really that distracting when you see something as crazy as that? Uh, one time at Hashra, we played them, and it was just this humongous guy behind, <laughs> behind the uh, the basket. And he took his shirt off and just started hands in the air, just shaking oh, around, no. going crazy. And it really is. Like, <laughs> you're trying to focus here, and you like you just see this guy like It's like, man. It really can distract you, though. Really? More than everybody going crazy. Yeah. Like, at least everything's the same. It's just that one guy going, it's like, wow, he's really getting my attention. No, what do you think of those signs where you spin it and it's like like the circle and it's like supposed to like uh, make you dizzy? I mean, those work, too. Especially if it's two on both sides, it really messes with you. It really messes yeah. with you? Don't give anyone yeah. scouting reports. <laughs> Fans, here are these two signs for Sean. Remember, shut your free throw. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that, those, those definitely work. But it's a lot of tactics that could work. Mm-hmm. That's funny, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll send you the video. It was, it was, it's the best distraction I've seen. It's absolutely great. Uh, like people have the big signs and everything, but when you get one person just to go crazy like that, yeah. and, and coach, everybody's quiet as yeah, that. Coach K made a comment after the game. He's like, "We will no longer be having speedos in the in the stands." Cause like coach noticed it, and the guy was like, "Oh man, bummer," because he didn't allow speedos anymore. I don't, in the I don't get why Coach K wouldn't like that. I I don't know either. Maybe just didn't like the idea of someone standing basically naked in the middle of an arena. Like I guess Coach K is not a fan of the beach. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be a fan of water polo either. Oh no, no, definitely not. But I mean that that's that's the craziest thing I've heard. Um but I mean that's gotta be distracting, obviously. Uh but that's we're backtracking to connect it. You guys are practicing free throws and it's obviously it's not game time yet because mm-hmm. there's gonna be pressure moments and stuff like that. Um but let's get back to football because your Minnesota Vikings had a very, very competitive game. Against the Dallas Cowboys. Before we talk about our loss, do you see Adrian Peterson troll? Oh <laughs> my God! Everybody into the end zone. Oh my God! I don't know how you scored. That is how a man runs. Yeah. That is how a man is meant to run. Yeah. Right. That right there. <laughs> he had like five people on his back. I was like, nope. I'm just gonna keep on going. Legit was off both his feet, on the side, and then just brought it back forward. I'm like, I don't get how you did it. That's absolutely crazy. No, it was a, it was the best run of the week, and it was only well, only like a twelve yard run. Yeah. But he took on every almost basically every defender. Did you see the Bengals run? Hmm. I think it was the Bengals. Giovanni Bernard. <laughs> yeah. Thursday night. <laughs> I'm gonna go one way. Nope. Nope. Just go okay. completely the other way. That was unreal. Too. They said it was reminiscent of Barry Sanders. That play. That's that's crazy. What about Megatron? <laughs> Dude, m- stats. oh my God! Two weeks ago, what was it? Three hundred seventy yards receiving, 
three touchdowns. That was against the Dallas Cowboys. Des Bryant was like, I'm as good as Calvin Johnson. Ain't, ain't got to worry about it. Calvin Johnson's like, nope, you're not as good as me. Who, who are you, who's better to you? Calvin Johnson. Oh, my God, please. By far? By far. He's oh. by far the best receiver in the Through NFL. Through the first 50 games, their stats are hand in hand. And actually, Des Bryant's stats are a little bit better. That's because he, he's a Tony Romo for every single game. Calvin Johnson's been without Stafford before because Stafford gets hurt like a baby. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, but I, I I think I'll take Calvin Johnson too, but... How could you not take Calvin Johnson? No, you do, but it's not like by far. Des Bryant is a great player. He's, he's a great player, but Calvin Johnson's an A-plus player. He's he's by far the best receiver in the NFL. Mm. I I put Des Bryant top five. So what's your... Who's number two? Number two receiver in the NFL. Um, Am I allowed to put tight ends, or is it just wide receivers? I mean, if you go tight ends, I'm going Gronk right away. I'd, I'd put Tony Gonzalez over Gronk. No, 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 no. Or Jimmy Graham. No, no. Right now? Nobody's better than Gronk. Well, I'm, I'm glad you say that as a Patriots fan. <laughs> I'm perfectly I'm perfectly content with you saying that. There's nothing wrong with that statement Nobody's at all. Nobody's better than Gronk. But I think I think um, Tony Gonzalez is still the best tight end I would I would have on the field. Just because he's been in the league forever. He knows every defense, and he, could, he has hands of steel. He doesn't drop anything. I don't know. But I was so happy to see Gronk. I don't, and I hate the Patriots. <laughs> but I was so happy to see Gronk back. Gronk spike. <laughs> Went nuts with <laughs> the first scored, Gronk yeah. spike. Everybody loved it. And the Patriots looked good. Yeah, Patriots yeah. looked really good, even though it's against the Steelers, which is which is a rough go. But we sidetracked from your Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> I try to get you there. <laughs> no, but no, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to drag you back because I want, I want your take on this whole entire situation because you guys had the lead late, you pick off Tony Romo, and you have a chance to win, get your second win of the season, and really hurt the Dallas Cowboys in their, divi- in their division, but you guys can't hold on to it late. What were your thoughts at the end of that game? Just, I don't know. That's just, that just shows how the season goes. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing else to say. I, I, sadly, Agent Peterson needs to get out of there. You think you think he needs to get out of there? Yes. Why was your career being, you're great with a terrible team. It's not like next year they're going to get better. It's like a three-year plan with that team. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think it's time for him to go. Where do you see him fitting in? <sighs> if anywhere. Man, if you're going to stay with a bad team, go to Oakland. Go, why would you and if he'd be traded? Why would he go to a, why would you go to another bad team? I'm saying if you're going to stay with a bad team, you okay. might as well go Oakland. They're on, they're on the rise right now. They are on the rise. Terrell Pryor, the quarterback. They have Darren McFadden, who's very, very fragile. Yeah, they have pieces that they can work with over there. Well, how about the Chiefs? The Chiefs are the weakest 9-0 team I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> in my life. I've never heard anything like that. They are not that good. I'm sorry. They're not that they're, good. They're 9-0. They're 9-0, and but you see if they played? They played cupcakes. They played so, cupcake so, teams. So they played nine cupcake teams, what you're telling me. Okay. They didn't score an offensive touchdown against the Buffalo Bills. They won on their defense. Their defense is great. Do not get me wrong. Their defense is really good. So that makes them even better because they have different ways to win games. Okay, let me ask you this. Right? If they go up against Denver, who wins? As of right now, you might have to go with the Chiefs. <laughs> what? <laughs> you might have to go with the Chiefs. What? The not and no. You can't doubt anybody. That is the most ridiculous you statement you I've heard. You cannot doubt anybody that's not So you think, okay. I'm gonna, I think that right now, New Orleans could beat the Chiefs. I think Denver could beat the Chiefs. Who, I think San Francisco could beat the, the Chiefs. Who did the Chiefs play next? The Chiefs have, I believe, a bye this week. Then they play Denver next. All right, so we see that game. Per- perfect. Denver wins by two touchdowns. Denver might get the second most of the season. I respectfully disagree with that. <laughs> you, you look at their scares. They play Jacksonville. Okay. Jacksonville. It doesn't even count as a game. It's it's still it's another preseason game. It was week one of the season. Count that as another uh, preseason game. Then they played Dallas. A good win in Dallas. I'll give you. Dallas is a good team. Yes. Then they played Philadelphia. Not that good of a team this year. Besides Nick Foles last week, let's just which was Peyton Manning must be furious that he he <laughs> dare tie his record. Then you played New York Giants. Not a good team. Oh, Tennessee Titans. Not that good of a team. Oakland. Not that good of a team. Mm-hmm. Houston Texans. Not that good of a team. And then you barely beat Cleveland, who's on the rise. But they beat Cleveland, but continue. And then Buffalo, who you didn't score a touchdown against, and your defense scored all your touchdowns. And Buffalo had or had their third-string quarterback. Now, they are 9-0, correct? Yes. <laughs> but they rank 29th in the NFL in passing yards. 29th. So if they get behind in the game, good luck trying to catch up. But it just shows if they own throwing that game, then good luck beating them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they win in ways where you shouldn't win. 
So that makes them even but that much tougher. When they don't catch a break one game, when a, like for instance, they got a pick six because a rookie quarterback threw the ball into a into a defender on the one yard line. The Bills last week they got a pick six. Peyton Manning's not going to make that mistake. They can't live on the mistakes of other teams, which they've done so far at times with the Browns, with the Bills, with with New York. The the, the New York Giants are in that game. They rank 29th in the NFL passing. If they get behind by by more than a touchdown, they're not going to win that game. Hey. No, I'm I'm going with the numbers on lie theory, and I, at the 29th in the league, but you're winning games. Something something's right. The defense is good enough, and then that the little office that they have is is working. Okay. Also, opponents average rushing 120 yards per game mm-hmm. against the Chiefs. How much is the average passing? They average only allowing 200 passing, 208 passing yards per game. That's great. It's okay, but now let's 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 build on that right now because mm-hmm. if you allow the team to run the ball, they're gonna have time of possession on you. If you get a team, for instance, like they play San Diego week 12. San Diego has Ryan Matthews and Danny Woodhead and Ronnie Brown. They are all good running backs, and they can control the clock as long as Phil Purpose doesn't make any stupid decisions. Mm. That's why I can see a team like San Diego upsetting Kansas City because they can control 40 minutes of the clock, only give 20 minutes to Kansas City, and Kansas City doesn't have that great of an offense. And that's why I could see a San Diego like, like a team that could upset Kansas City. Can't, that was working. That's all, that's all I got to go with. You can't. I am absolutely baffled that you think <laughs> that the Kansas City Chiefs could beat the Denver Broncos. Now, what, now, what are you going to tell me if they beat them next week? What are you going to say? It was luck. Then, I, know, no, I know you're going to tell me it was in, luck. In two weeks, if Kansas City beats Denver, I will shriek over Coach Krampus. Hmm? Okay, that's a little bit too far. <laughs> but I will say on the station that you are right, and I will say something ridiculous, but it's just not going to happen. You have to tweet that you love Kansas City. I will tweet that I love Kansas City All if right, they yeah. win that game. We have that wager right now. Yeah. But it's there's just no way that's going to happen. <laughs> in Mile High Stadium. Hey, not no team. When you give a t- person confidence, they 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 feed off it. Let's leave it at that. You okay. Give, you give a bad player confidence, they think they, they Michael Jordan. Okay. Now I can I can agree with that. But also they're heading into this game off a of bye week, which means I think some of the momentum is going to go down the drain. Because as much as you want to say, I think having a week off in the NFL kills your momentum if you're winning. Because no, you want to get on that field. I agree, but then again, you could say that it's great. We could study Peyton Manning. You can you can make up. A, you could just turn it somehow. You can't study Peyton Manning. Pe- people oh, have tried studying Peyton Manning. I agree with you, but I'm saying they could just flip it like that. Okay, I'll, I want to look at the Kansas City's rest of the schedule. They have Denver, San Diego, Denver, Washington. Are there four games after the bye? I could see any of those two, any of those four teams beating Kansas City. They win two out of four. They win two out of those four games. Yep. Okay, so so they'll be. Okay, so then at that point, eleven and two. They'll be eleven and two. They'll probably have the same record as Denver. And you're still you still put Kansas City above Denver. Kansas City is gonna. Uh, oh, Kansas City is gonna beat beat the Broncos twice. Yes. <laughs> no, not twice. Just once. Okay, they 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 go Denver, San Diego, then Denver again, then Washington. Those four weeks. Mm-hmm. So you think they'll split, and then they'll split the Washington, San Diego games? They're not gonna go undefeated one. They're okay. going to beat the Broncos. I'm, okay, I'm fine. confident with that. What seed do you see the Chiefs finishing in the AFC? One through six. They're going to finish first. You think they're going to win home field advantage for these yes. throughout the entire playoffs? Yes. They are not going to win home field advantage. So you're telling me they're going to go on a four-game losing streak? No, I'm saying they're going to go on a three-game losing streak, and they're going to finish maybe 13-3 and three or something, or 12-4, and four, I could see them finishing, mm-hmm. and Denver's going to get home field advantage. Well, I cannot wait till they play against each other. Oh, man. <laughs> This is the first time we've really, truly disagreed on the show, and because you are wrong. <laughs> there is just no way. There is absolutely no way. They were 28th in the 29th in the NFL passing. They are 9 and 0. You can't, you can't deny that. Okay, they're 9 and 0, but they played nobody. They played absolutely nobody. That's like saying St. Peter's goes 9 and 0 to start the MAC. They're undefeated. You can't say that. Oh, dude, they're on fire. Hey. If the team's winning, they're winning. What are you going to say? No. My, all right, my freshman year, we beat St. Peter's twice by uh-huh. 30. We lost to them in the chip by four. I, or, or I six, remember whatever. that. Yeah. What? We're, we're, we're obviously the better team. We averaged 25 points per game winning against them, and they won. You give anybody confidence, they can beat anybody. That's my point right here. They have the confidence to beat Broncos. Do they have the confidence to beat the Broncos? Yes. But is confidence enough? No. You, talent also matters. All right, so we'll see next week. That's what I'm saying. Okay, it's in two weeks. All right, so I'm so next know, week we weeks. can muster this even more. Okay. And then in two weeks from now, I'm going to come on the show and be like, you're wrong. <laughs> and it happens. <laughs> we will see. 
And now that same thing's going to happen when the Pelicans reach the playoffs. I'm just going to be like, I'm sorry, Sean. Not going to reach right. the playoffs. Yep. I'm just telling you, Anthony Davis, he's going to make he's gonna make the All-Star team this year, Anthony Davis. I agree with that. All right, at least we agree on that. At least we agree on that. We left it on a good note. <laughs> we left it on a good note. All right, that's all the time we got here for Out of Bounds. Sean Ramon, John Zango here at WICR. You heard the wager, and two weeks from now, if the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Denver Broncos, I will tweet that I love Kansas City and that they're the best team in the NFL <laughs> if they beat Denver two weeks from now. But it won't happen, so we have nothing to look forward to. <laughs> but just in case, I mean, just in case you want to write it down somewhere, just to show we, we Sean he was record. wrong. We have it recorded. We have, we, yes, we have it recorded. <laughs> but I want to thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, this will be up online shortly uh, for everyone who wants to listen once again or to pass it on. Uh, enjoy your Tuesday night, and we'll see you guys next week here on Out of Bounds. John Stanko and Sean Armont. I don't know what they're doing down there, Big Shot Rob. That ball is high. It is far. It is gone. You can listen to the Sports Vault every Friday from 1230 to 130 on WICR.